welcome. I'm Nikita Singh and you're watching Tech It Out. This week we fly into the battlefield to see how drones are redefining modern warfare. We also explore whether a solid state air conditioning system could be the future of cooling and we plug into the UK's first quantum satellite station, a game changer that could make cyber attacks a thing of the past. From the skies above to the front lines across the globe, drones are rewriting the rules of warfare. No longer just surveillance tools, they're delivering deadly precision strikes with minimal risk to operators. But how far will this technology go? Let's find out. From the trench warfare of the First World War to strikes by swarms of remote-controlled attack drones today, from the charge of the cavalry and troop formation tactics to AI-powered robots and long-distance hypersonic missiles. The tools of modern warfare have changed the stakes of conventional war. Military superiority is no longer about sheer numbers. Instead, it's access to technology and advanced weaponry that determines who has the upper hand. As recent conflicts have borne out, drones have emerged as game-changers on the battlefield. Used for surveillance and to deploy bombs, drones have proven to be versatile, cost-effective and capable of deadly precision strikes. Critically, the pilot is usually out of harm's way and the only threat that drones pose is to the adversary they target. According to reports, India deployed Sky Striker suicide drones during Operation Sindur to locate and target terrorist infrastructure. The recent strike on terror camps in Pakistan and Pakistan-occupied Kashmir was India's response to the Pehelgam terror attack. Not surprisingly, drones' success on the battlefield has countries around the world scrambling to up their drone game. Ukraine's vampire drones have struck fear in the heart of Russian troops. Soldiers from Russia call the drone Baba Yaga, after a witch from Slavic folklore who, as the myth goes, appears and flies about at night. Russians call it Baba Yaga because the drone is very loud and big. When the drone hovers over the enemy's soldiers, they disperse. The vampire drone has been developed by Skyfall, a Ukrainian manufacturer. Vampire drone is manufactured in Ukraine and therefore is not dependent on foreign parts and munition. Munition and parts for vampire drone can be produced in Ukraine. The vampire drone has been designed to operate effectively under the cover of night, making it an elusive adversary to foes and an effective ally to ground forces. We also deliver food, water to infantry troops that cannot be delivered by land. The heavy hexacopter bomber can carry up to 15 kilograms of munitions. Equipped with a thermal camera, the Vampire drone is capable of identifying static as well as moving targets within a range of 10 kilometers. In the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, the drone has earned a fearsome reputation for targeting Russian troops, especially those sheltering in dugouts and bunkers. For something that was first produced as a toy, then went on to replace unwieldy cranes used in film production, and now is an essential part of military weaponry. The rise of drones has been astonishing, to say the least. But you have to wonder, what comes next? A drone with a generative AI-powered mind of its own? Now that is truly dystopian. Heat in Britain is now a warning sign of a warming planet. As air conditioners become both a necessity and a climate burden, could the answer lie not in gases, but in solids? Watch this report for more details. 
Days of summer. It would be ironic if it wasn't tragic. Just a couple of decades back, a sunny day in England meant that people would take a holiday and enjoy a day out in the park. Since then, the effects of climate change have accelerated. Things came to a head in 2024, the hottest year on record in history. And Europe bore the brunt of it. Temperatures soared, wildfires raged and floods ravaged cities. Climate change has become the most critical issue facing the world. Tamping down on the use of harmful refrigerants and aerosols, like the ones used in refrigerators and air conditioning systems, is seen as the first line of defense. Britain probably has a fraction of air conditioning units compared to Asia. But researchers at Cambridge University are at the forefront of new innovations aimed at mitigating harmful greenhouse gas emissions from air conditioning units. Their bright idea? Do away with the gas and replace it with a solid refrigerant. In development at a lab in the UK, this seemingly unassuming soft waxy material has a plethora of potential benefits and could change the future of the technology. What we are trying to develop is a new cooling and heating technology that can be used in many different applications that is good for the environment because it has no contribution to the global warming and also is more efficient so it will also save you money in the, in the electricity bills. So how does the solid refrigerant act as a cooling agent? In physics they call this mechanism the barocaloric effect. Simply put, molecules become aligned and release heat when subjected to pressure. Similarly, when the pressure is removed, the molecules become less ordered and absorb heat. The cycle of pressurization and depressurization enables refrigeration, creating a cooling effect that transfers to the material's surroundings. According to the International Energy Agency, commonly known as IEA, there are approximately 2 billion air conditioning units in operation around the world. Proliferation of air conditioning comes at a significant environmental cost. The increased energy consumption, coupled with refrigerant gas leaks and improper disposal, end up contributing heavily to global emissions. The team at Cambridge working on the new refrigerant claim the new technology could help reduce greenhouse gas emissions from cooling systems by up to 75%. The UK-based lab Barocal hopes to launch the product by 2028. UK has just unveiled its first ever quantum satellite ground station, an innovation that could make cyber attacks nearly impossible. Could this be the future of cybersecurity and the beginning of a truly quantum internet? UK-based Heriot Watt University has launched a groundbreaking quantum communications hub optical ground station, also known as HOGS. Built at a cost of $3.3 million, this state-of-the-art facility marks a significant leap forward in the UK's quantum technology capabilities, specifically aimed at bolstering defences against future cyber threats. HOGS is UK's first facility dedicated to quantum key distribution via satellite, leveraging single photon technology for ultra-secure data transmission. So this facility is set up to look at and track low Earth orbit satellites, particularly those that have optical, laser or quantum communication payloads on that want to go from satellite to ground. The station uses advanced laser systems to communicate with satellites. This allows QKD or quantum key distribution to create encryption keys that are virtually unhackable. The first aim of this facility is to accept data uh, from a satellite mission called SPOC, which stands for Satellite Platform for Optical Quantum Communications. The SPOC mission, uh, which goes up later this year, we are working with international partners to have it connect to other places in the world, and then it will also connect with our ground station here, so essentially creating our own uh, quantum internet across the world. The quantum station has been designed to protect critical information in sectors like banking and healthcare. The aim is to reduce UK's multi-billion dollar yearly losses to cybercrime. 
In recent years, British companies, public bodies and institutions have been significantly impacted by a wave of cyber attacks. This has led to the British government urging all UK companies to regard cybersecurity as an absolute priority. The benefit for, to global business will be there'll be alternative approaches to encryption. I think most people would see uh, alternative forms of encryption, quantum-based encryption uh, techniques, would be in high-value transactions or government communications, for example. In 2024, Britain announced several new quantum research hubs to advance research into healthcare, cybersecurity and transport. As the UK aims to become a quantum-enabled economy by 2035, these hubs are expected to drive entrepreneurship, workforce development and regulatory input into the rapidly emerging UK quantum industry, potentially sparking significant economic growth and job creation in the coming years. We've shared a lot of interesting stories on emerging tech trends, but there's a lot more that's happening in the world of technology across the globe. Here's a quick wrap of all the latest developments. According to GLAAD, an LGBTQ plus media monitoring and advocacy organization, popular social media platforms have failed to curtail the hate, invective and harassment faced by the LGBTQ plus community. In its fifth annual social media safety index report, GLAAD highlighted how the recent rollback of content moderation and safety policies by major tech giants, notably Meta, has fueled this spurt of hate content. In January, tech giant Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram, did a Walta face with Mark Zuckerberg announcing that its content moderation policies were curtailing free speech and needed to go. Similarly, YouTube, owned by Alphabet, removed gender identity from the list of protected characteristics in its hate speech policy. Meanwhile, GLAAD has put out a list of popular social media sites ranked on indicators like privacy and expression as related to issues affecting LGBTQ plus individuals online. Elon Musk's X ranks the lowest. Ironically, TikTok ranks the highest among other social media platforms. According to a TechCrunch report, a notification system used by federal and state agencies to issue important resident alerts has been compromised by cyber criminals. According to the report, users were redirected to malicious websites after clicking on hidden links. The links were contained in fake mails that alleged unpaid toll fees by the recipients. The US state of Indiana has acknowledged that it is aware of these fraudulent messages. In an official statement, the state of Indiana has said that contractors' account had been compromised and was used to distribute these scam messages. Even though the state maintained that no current state systems were breached, it did not rule out the possibility of a prior incident. Officials clarified that although the contract with the unnamed company had ended in December 2024, the vendor had failed to remove the state's account from its systems. Malaysia is grappling with a significant surge in illegal cryptocurrency mining. According to Tenaga Nacional Berhad, or TNB, Malaysia's largest electricity provider, there has been a massive 300% increase in illegal crypto mining between 2018 and 2024. TNB's data reveals a stark increase in electricity theft, jumping from 610 cases in 2018 to 2,397 by 2024. This theft occurs when miners tamper with electricity meters to gain unpaid access, costing TNB millions and increasing the risk of power outages. Crypto mining is a power-hungry process. Mining crypto requires a permanent electrical connection to power the advanced computers that continuously tackle its complex algorithms. Suspiciously high electricity bills led authorities to uncover illegal cryptocurrency mining setups operating within rented properties. 
Microsoft has decided to lay off about 3% of its global workforce. That's approximately 6,000 employees of the company's current workforce of 228,000 people worldwide. This move is part of an ongoing effort to streamline operations, with a focus on reducing management layers. The layoffs are expected to impact all levels and regions. Although the company has not provided specific details on which departments will be affected, the layoffs at Microsoft are part of a broader wave of job cuts in the tech sector. In 2025 alone, over 22,000 positions have already been eliminated across the industry. Companies like Google, Meta and Amazon are in the process of making similar moves. There's a pattern emerging in which companies have been prioritizing investments in areas like AI and automation, while reducing staff in other departments. Well, that's all we have for you in this episode of Tech It Out. We will continue to bring you exciting new inventions and updates on the latest gadgets. Until then, keep watching Beyond World is One. And yes, don't forget to follow us on social media. For now, it's me, Nikita Singh, taking your leave. See you next week.